So now that we've looked at positioning and several different types of it to see how we can use them to change the layout of our page, we're going to see how we can do that slightly differently with margins. So I'm just going to change our code, get rid of that big height there and change the position here back to relative. So as I hope you remember, that in itself doesn't make any difference. But you'll remember also that we can do things like this. Once we've set the position to be relative, we can set the left property to 100 pixels and that effectively gives it a margin to the left of 100 pixels. So what's the difference then between using relative positioning and using margins? Well, let's find out. So first of all, you notice I've got rid of the positioning completely here. So we're not doing positioning, we're using margins. And initially I'm gonna set the margin to 100 pixels. So what does that do? Aha, so now we've got a margin of 100 pixels all the way round the box. So we've got a, obviously at the top, left, bottom, and right. So hopefully you can see straight away that this is different to positioning. Even though the effect might be we're moving it to the right and down, we are actually creating a margin all the way round, which we can't actually do with positioning. Now, if we wanted our blue box here to be to the right of that, then we would just float them both to the left. And I'll just do that quickly to show you that we do indeed have a margin all the way round. So there you go. If we stretch that out, you can see we've got the margin here. And now because these two are floated left, this blue box is now to the right of the green one, but it has this margin in between it. So that's the main difference really between positioning and margins. And you can use them in some cases for the same thing, but they are a little bit different. So let's just look at margins in a bit more detail and see what else we can do with them. So here we've got a margin of 100 pixels all the way around. What if we wanted to have a different margin on each edge? Well, that's pretty easy. We could have 100 pixels and then 50 pixels. Now let's see what that does. Okay, so that moves it over to the left. What we've effectively done there is we've set the top and bottom margins to 100 pixels and we've set the left and right margins to 50 pixels. So if you want to pause the video and test by floating those two left, you'll see that the blue one ends up around there. So about 50 pixels to the right. So that's a really handy way of setting the top and bottom ones different to the left and right ones. But you could also set them all to something different. So let's have something like 20 pixels and 10 pixels. And then let's have a look. So what's going on here is this starts at the top and then goes round clockwise. So the top margin is 100 pixels up there. Then if we could see it, the right margin is 50 pixels. And then the bottom margin is 20 pixels. And then the left margin is 10 pixels. You might not be able to see that left margin very clearly. So let's just convince you by taking that back up to 100 pixels and that now changes the left margin. So that's how you set each of the margins, top, right, bottom and left individually. One last thing that you might want to do is only set one particular margin and leave the rest as whatever they are. And you can do that using margin dash and then bottom, left, right, top, depending on which one you want to change. So if we wanted to set margin left to be, I don't know, 150 pixels, then that will just set the left margin and it will leave the others as whatever they are. And that's pretty much it. So generally you would use margins when you wanted your element to remain in the flow of the page and to spread everything out relative to it. And you would use positioning if you wanted to take your element out of the flow of the page and move it around on top of other elements and that sort of thing. Very quick challenge then to give you an opportunity to practice margins. Can you take the blue div and make it so that it has margins of 50 pixels on the top and the bottom and 20 pixels left and right? And bonus points if you can do that in two different ways. So 50 pixels top and bottom, 20 pixels left and right, 
Go for it. Hope that worked out for you. I'm going to show you a few different ways to do it. In fact, there are three different ways. So the first one I'll show you is a single margin. So we said 50 pixels top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right. Let's have a look. There we go. So we've got 50 pixels at the top and the bottom and 20 left. And if we could see it, there'd be 20 on the right as well there. So that's one way of doing it. That's probably the simplest solution. Another solution is to set all of them manually like that. And if we just have a look at that, that does exactly the same thing. So that was solution number two. There is, however, a third solution. So super bonus marks if you've got this one as well. We could set the margin top as being 50 pixels. And then I'm just going to save my typing a little bit. Set the bottom to be 50 pixels as well. Could set the left to be 20 pixels. And of course, set the right to be 20 pixels too. And that's another way to do it, even though it's a little bit more long winded than the first two solutions that we had. All right. So that's how we use margins to move our elements around the page. We're now going to see how we can use something very similar called padding to provide a much needed bit of space between the edge of one element and the beginning of something inside it. We'll be looking at that in the next video.